Trump is motivated by protecting the United States of America from Islamic terrorism, whereas what has happened in this room and in governments around Europe is you have welcomed these people into your own homes. What we need to do is to have an open dialogue with the newly elected most powerful man in the world and if you throw that rejection back in my face then you prove yourself to be the anti-democratic zealots that I always thought you were. All right, you know that guy, Brexit leader Nigel Farage, uh, making a big speech at the European <laughs> Parliament earlier today. Talk about going into, uh, I, I don't know what you'd call it, viper's nest, however you want to call it. Anyway, uh, Nigel, very good to have you. How was that received? You. Uh, again, you were reminding them of the dangers that are out there and what's there. Uh, and some obviously liked what you said. I don't know about the others. What, do you, what, what happened? Oh, no. I mean, you saw the people behind me who were clapping, but believe you me, the vast majority uh, were screaming and shouting. And there were even people in the public gallery who were shouting me down. Uh, you see, what has happened here is uh, that with President Trump saying, look, we're going to put a 90-day, you, you know, freeze on these seven countries, countries, incidentally, that Obama identified as being dangerous, this is being used as an excuse to attack Trump. But the real reason isn't that. The real reason is that this new American administration does not respect supranational organizations like the European Union. It believes in nation states. And these guys here, they were scared after Brexit. They're now terrified by Trump. What is it they're terrified about? Nigel, just what? Well, what they're terrified of is this, that uh, this, this incredible uh, structure that has been built up here in Brussels. I mean, it's, 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 it's been one of the best pay jobs, one of the best pension provisions for tens of thousands of people the world has ever seen. And what they know is not just with Brexit, but in every country in Europe, the populations are saying, what on earth is this all about? Why don't we run our own countries and make our own laws? And there have been some hints coming out from the Trump administration that they would like to do trade deals and business with countries bilaterally bypassing the bureaucrats of the European Union. So they fear that Trump effectively will freeze them out. Um, is it their sense, too, that, that, that this danger doesn't exist for everybody? I mean, uh, no one seems immune, including the members of the European community and the European Union itself. No one's immune to this threat. I mean, so what is it they have against the new president oh well well they i mean don't forget that mr juncker who runs the commission here right. and chancellor merkel who is who is the chancellor of germany both of these people said about 18 months ago we will welcome as many people that cross the mediterranean as possible and all of them can settle in our countries that has led i'm sad to say directly to isis terrorists coming into europe and, and, and we've seen a string of the most appalling atrocities. But they're in denial over this. And they see Trump saying, I'm going to make America safe. I'm going to be absolutely careful. I'll put in place extreme vetting to protect American citizens. And perhaps because of their own guilt and their own, you, you know, realization of what they've done to their own communities, they now label him as being extremist and racist for doing so. And I did my best today, Neil, to stand up and defend his actions. Did, did you get invited to speak? Uh, or did they... How, how did this all come down? <laughs> well, it's a very bizarre twist and deeply ironic, uh, but I, I'm actually the leader of a group in the European Parliament. I lead the rebels. I lead the Eurosceptics. Mm. And much as they hate me, they, they can't stop me speaking in these debates. Amazing. Um, you know, let me ask you while uh, you're here. Uh, uh, we have a, a big uh, fight coming up in this country over the next Supreme Court Justice. Neil Gorsuch has been chosen by President Trump to be the successor to Antonin Scalia, who died about yeah. a year ago. But already a number of Democrats, Nigel, are linking support for him to the president rolling back this travel ban delay whatever you want to call it what do you think of that because now th these are not like events uh but a number of democrats are are linking them uh, what do you think of that well it reminds me rather of people like tony blair 
um, Nick Clegg, the former Deputy Prime Minister in Britain, who refused to accept the Brexit result um, and want to do whatever they can to delay it or frustrate it. And I think you're seeing the same, not just from Democrats, but actually from very large sections of the Liberal media in America. Uh, they still haven't grasped the fact that Trump has just become the 45th president of the USA. They'd all rather turn the clock back to 2015. Uh, so they're going to be difficult, they're going to be obstructive, uh, but in the end, Trump will get his way. You know, Nigel, uh, the National Security Council is meeting in the White House right now. Uh, Donald Trump will soon join them, no doubt, when he returns from a Dover Air Force Base. But one of the things that has come up is what to do about Iran and apparently violating, a, you know, a, a UN rules that were in place on, on uh, intercontinental missiles. Uh, <laughs> Iran has come out and yeah. said what we had wasn't nuclear, be that as it may, you already have a General Flynn at the White House saying we're officially putting Iran on notice. What do you think that means? What do you think it should mean? More sanctions, tougher actions, military action, what? Well, well there is a lesson from history, and it is that after the First World War, there was a Versailles Treaty that said that there were many things that Germany militarily could not do. And as she began, piece by piece under Hitler, to break the rules that had been agreed, everybody said, OK, so far and no further. It was a policy that was caused appeasement. It led directly, because of our weakness, all of us in Europe, towards Germany, towards World War II. I'm not suggesting the comparisons are direct, but I do think that if you have an agreement with a country, a country, you know, with whom relations have been bad, and they start to breach those rules, you have to recognise that maybe a very bad deal has been done and it's time to change the game. Nigel Farage, thank you very, very much. I want to update you, you on this same issue that the House is coming up with a new Iran sanctions measure. We're going to get the read from uh, Ambassador John Bolton after this.